What's cracking everyone? I'm Tom and today we're going to be talking about how to program in C through Visual Studio Code. Let's get into that. Alright, so before we get started you guys need to have Visual Studio Code installed as well as Homebrew if you are on Mac. So let's get into this. Um, so right here I have main.c opened up in my editor in code. And if I go and try to, uh, you know, type in anything, um, like maybe even include, you see that it doesn't really give me any really good suggestions for when I'm typing. So we're going to fix that. So this first extension I like to use is the C, C++ extension from Microsoft. So you see here. Um, you go ahead and install this guy. So once that's installed, uh, and we come back here, um, you might get this window, so you just click reload. Uh, you might get another window that says to like upgrade the channel. I'm not sh exactly sure what that is, but do go ahead and click yes. Now after you get that installed, if um, I want what I want you to go ahead and do is type in include and then uh, do standard io.h and if it doesn't give you the red squiggly line here then you should be good to go if, if it does and it tells you something about a declaration that means you need to install a package right so if you get that red squiggly line all you have to do is just come here to offline installation and then go here click open just go up here, it should be at right here, and then go ahead, scroll down to CPT Tools OS X or your operating system. Go ahead and install that, and then once it's once it's downloaded, then you just have to do uh, Shift Command or, or Shift Control for Windows P, and then uh, it should be right here. All you have to type in is VSIX, and it says install from VSIX, and then you go find it, and then install it into Visual Studio Code and that red squiggly line should disappear. So now that we have this extension installed, uh, you'll see here it says IntelliSense Debugging and Code Browsing. Now if you're completely new to programming, I'm about to show you what each of these three things are. So first for IntelliSense, um, as you saw when we first started, when I typed in like int, when I typed in int, it didn't really show anything, right? But whereas if I type in I here now, it shows if, if D, if L, L, if. So these are all code snippets. So like if we wanted to do an if else, we just click on that and then boom, we get our if else. But we're not doing that yet. But it'll show you all the predefined types. So there's integer. If we wanted to do a float, boom, as a float. So if you forget anything, it'll just show you. And so you don't have to do, you barely have to do any typing anymore. And so what's also nice about IntelliSense is it will go and look through all of the libraries that are installed through the C language. Um, so all the standard packages. So if we go include here, and then I'm hitting tab to autocomplete everything. And we do bracket, so you can see here standard io.h. So boom, okay, we have that. And then now what the IntelliSense is gonna do is it's gonna load in all those functions or variables, whatever else that is defined in that header file into our current session. So if we create our main here and then we wanna print something out to the screen, that's what standard IO does for us. So if we typed in printf, boom, there it is. And then you can see um, printf takes in a uh, char pointer and then some more variables. So printf and we're just going to say hello world. Duh. So we're going to create our hello world here. Save that. And then if you don't have this terminal opened up, um, what you can do is on Mac and Windows, or at least on Mac, it is control um, tilde, the tilde key. I don't know what it is for Windows, but once you have that open, you should your operating system should have the C compiler and C++ compiler installed. So to compile our program, we just type in CC and then pass in our 
file name, so I did mine for main.c, and then you can do a dash o for the outputted file for main, and then so now that's going to save my compiled code to a file called main. So we do dot forward slash main, then we get hello world back. And I apologize for those that are on Windows. Uh, you should be able to follow along with me if you have Windows 10 and PowerShell installed. I believe if you have the latest up-to-date version, they did include the uh, Linux kernel as part of the Windows operating system. So you should have all of these features within Windows. So that's what IntelliSense does, is it just gives us more insight onto what we can include. Um, you know, if we even, let's say we had another file, right? Let's say we created our own header file called another dot h. Uh, we can just come up here and when we do include, and so if we want to include a header file that's in within our current directory in our current program, we do the double quotes. And then if I typed in another, you'll see another dot h comes up. But obviously there's nothing in it. So that's what IntelliSense is. It just tells us everything that's available to us at that point in time. Now for debugging, debugging is going to help you out a lot. Now if you're a student or anything, you're just getting started into C, I highly recommend looking into debugging. It'll help you out tremendously. It'll help you debug through your code, figure out what's going on. So for Mac, you have to install what's called LLDB. It is a debugger for your C program because there's not a native debugging tool for Mac. Whereas for Windows, I believe there's already one installed for you. So Windows, people have it a little bit uh, more lucky. So all you have to do for Mac is you just have to use this script here. And I'll be putting it in the description. But you just run the script and then it'll install LLDB on your Mac. So I think after you have LLDB installed, now let's just add in here an integer called my int. You can call it whatever, but this is just for demonstration purposes for the debugging. So now to get into the debugging portion, all we have to do is just go to this little bug with the play button here, click on that, and then create a launch.json file, and then C++. And then I'm going to use GCC. You can use Clang if you want to. Um, but after you click on that, it should create your JSON file. And then it will run your program. And if you're on Mac, I think it might do this for Windows too, but it'll ask for permissions and typing in your password and stuff. Go ahead and do that. And you'll see that printed out Hello World for us. So I'm going to show you the power of this right now. So if we wanted to print out the myint, right? and then we go to debug you'll see it's set to 99 and then we all we all know that it's going to print out 99 but if we have it in debug mode um so now it's stopped here go to the debug console and you'll see it hasn't printed out anything yet but if we change this to one and then we go run it you'll see that it did print out the one so that is how you set up debugging and intellisense for visual studio code and then the last feature here is code browsing. So what code browsing allows you to do is, let's go over to our main.c. So we have the standard IO file, right? But what if we don't know all the functions that are within inside of it? What if we want to know, you know, what are the functions that are defined? What are the variables that are defined? So if we hold down command or control in Windows and we click on the header, we'll see. Let's run through this one. Let's see if this one has a printf. Aha. So you'll see here that this is the file that has the printf declaration in it. So then obviously, you know, you can go through this and figure out how things work, but I'm not really going to do that. But anyways, that is our first extension, the extension from Microsoft called C, C++. And so the next extension that we're going to be looking at is a linter. So if we type in C lint here, uh, there should be an extension made by Joseph Benden. If we go ahead and install this thing here. Now it says supported static analyzers. So we'll want to install one of these here, but for my particular video, um, I'm going to install CPP check. 
So in order to do that, you'll need to have Homebrew installed. Now if you don't have Homebrew installed, go ahead and install it. I'm gonna leave a link in the description for you to go ahead and install it. But all you have to do is just run this command and I'll, again, any links or any commands that I'm gonna be typing in will be in the description. So once we run this command and install CPP check. All right, so let's come back here to our file. Um, and let's change this to hello world and save this. This is it right here. Um, as you can see, there's this little tiny squiggly line. If we hover over it, and then it says unused variable mine int. So this was really nice for, you know, if you want to keep your program small and you don't want to have any unused variables. So if we want to keep testing out this linter, uh, we can just remove this. And then if we save it, it'll tell us that uh, it's expecting one parameter, but it only got zero. So one other feature that comes with the Microsoft extension for C and C++ is the predefined code snippets. So if we go to our program here and we type in main and hit enter, that it created literally the main function for us. And we didn't have to do much, right? Or maybe we want to create an if else statement. If we just type an if here, it'll create an if for us. If we want to do um, an if else, we can do that as well. Just typing in very little stuff. And if we go down here, um, if, else, if, else, you know, it has all these predefined code snippets and I'm sure you can go find them on the extensions page. But that's it for today's video. If you guys liked it, please subscribe to see more. And if you guys like this video in particular, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. Let me know how I'm doing. And leave a comment if you have any other suggestions for any other extensions for Visual Studio Code. But if that's it, I'll see you later.